Hello, fellow alchemists. Welcome back to our weekly tutorial on the Elixir programming language. This week, I wanted to discuss a little bit about atoms. Now, atoms are a little bit of a mysterious topic because people don't really understand what's the point of an atom, okay? I mean, what, what's, what does it do? Well, by the end of this video, we hope that you can understand what's the point of an atom, why we have it, and what we can use it for. Okay, now let's go ahead and let's get started. So atoms are often used within Elixir and Erlang for quick comparisons. You'll often see uh, functions returning a tuple with, uh, say, OK and the value, or the, uh, a tuple with the first element being error and also the, uh, what the error is. And sometimes the error itself is also an atom. And so we often use atoms for these kind of quick comparisons to see, uh, you know, what, what they are and, and if it matches up properly. And it's important to know that you need to be careful when you use atoms. For the most part, you're okay, but just be careful about it because they are never garbage collected. Once they get created, they never actually go away until you turn off the VM. Because they're never garbage collected, you really need to be careful when you create them. Now, for instance, if you're, there's a function called string uh, to atom, and if you're taking uh, input from outside and you're converting all that to atoms, you are actually opening yourself up for an attack where somebody can just send you a ton of data and your VM will just be overloaded with atoms being created and eventually it'll just crash the, uh, the beam, the virtual machine that your uh, Elixir program is running on. So that's why you need to be careful what you do, and you can mitigate this attack by using this function string to existing atom. Okay, it's a very uh, important thing to know. For the most part, you can just keep them as strings. Um, let's move on. Now, the reason that we have atoms is, has to do with the history of Erlang. Now, in a previous video, when we talked about strings, I mentioned uh, Erlang doesn't really have this kind of concept of strings. What they have is character lists. And a character list is, as I also showed, um, it is a list of uh, integers. And so in Erlang, the, uh, a list is, uh, is actually a singly linked list. So that means that you have uh, a reference to the head of the list, which is uh, an element, and then a pointer to the next element. And so you, need, you, you can't just easily iterate through a whole entire list very quickly like you can with uh, an atom, because an atom is just one simple value. Uh, for a list, you have to actually go through every single element. So if your string or your character list is quite long, you have to actually iterate every single character piece by piece. Well, an atom is just a single value, so it's very, very quick to compare. And it's all in a single table. So there's only ever one atom that is that value. And so you just look to see, is this the same... Uh, item that's actually in the global table. And if it is, then it's, it's there. So that's the point of an atom is for these quick uh, comparisons. That's why you often see them uh, in return values for, you know, the OK tuple or the error tuple, which is quite common. Um, and uh, that's the reason that atoms came from, is for these kind of quick comparisons, because strings are just, uh, would take too long, or sorry, characters would just take too long to compare. And I'm going to show you um, how atoms work. So this is our existing project. So if you look, open up IEX, you will see that you know we when you want to create an atom, you need to use the colon character, and then you write the name of the atom. So this is the atom. Okay, you often see this being used, especially like if we use um, IO puts for outputting some content. So let's say we output hello world. You'll see what comes back is the return value of okay, saying that everything went okay. 
if we say put in some bad value, I think this should probably work. Yeah, that works. Uh, but if we put in this raise function, it'll freak out. <laughs> um, if we put in the error, an error uh, value, it still prints it just fine because it converts it over. Uh, what else is important to know is that we have this is atom function. So our OK is an atom. And you'll see that the string is not an atom. But something that you may not know is that the value true is actually an atom. So true is actually the same thing as this true. So there's actually no idea of true and false Boolean values. It's actually just the atom true and the atom false. So atoms are used consistently throughout uh, Elixir and uh, Erlang. So this is something to know. Um, and I believe that that should be all for kind of an introduction to atoms and why we have them. Uh, again, this is Alan from Plangora. And please subscribe. Uh, we release a new uh, video every week, uh, actually two videos a week. Every Wednesday we have a video like this, and every Friday we have a little mini-series that we run. And so uh, I'll catch you then. Thanks. Bye.